I just had one, one, a few bits of information I wanted to share real quick before I introduce my incredible guest. And I just want to wish everybody, first of all, a very Merry Christmas, those who celebrate. And I, I hope that you have a wonderful new year. Uh, and also a reminder that the star families that we are are not defined by the color of our suits, our sex, um, what, whatever you occupy, your political or religious views. They're defined by your actions and your intent and your level of consciousness and connection to the cosmic design. So try to keep that in mind. I know that we are in critical times right now here. But um, who we really are as star beings is really about energy and consciousness. I just want to pull that out right right now. Um, also, in the world where deception is everywhere, permeating in this virtual field, uh, I wish to remind you all, while you're here, um, to, to just appreciate the moment. You know, Stay close to those you love and appreciate time and the illusion while you're here. Um, the interaction with nature, elements, sacred harmony of music. Um, love your soul, your spirit design, and move forward never looking back. And fulfill those dreams that you have. Um, don't sit on them. Don't procrastinate. And never doubt you can change your reality in the world you choose to create. You can always change it. We can always make a change. Uh, special thank you to all these wonderful people here. You know, I, I say hi to everybody in the chat room. Um, there's so many people here I just want to say hello to and thank you for being who you are and being in my space on the timeline. You know, from Mr. Rowe to Jerry, I can just go down the checklist of all the good people and good souls out there. I just want to say thank you and um, who I've encountered on my journey here. You know, it's been incredible on the field of radio. So I just want to say, um, give a shout out to Nighthawk and the staff and everybody. It's been a long road and I can't believe I've been here as long as I have. So, and I teeter between worlds between, do I really want to keep doing the show or not? So I just, <laughs> I just want to say thank you for being supportive of who I am in the work and the radio show and also what I'm putting out in so far as the truth goes. Um, there is another thing I wanted to mention real quick on a separate note. With 2018 coming up around the corner here, I wish to bring into fruition and spotlight, and I think this is already happening, but I'd, I'd like to see spotlight directed at those who have done harm to others, opening the universal code of law to arrest and prosecute these groups who have knowingly and willingly deployed covert harassment induction programs, deception programs directed at remote targets of choice. And um, many of these perpetrators reside in all over in the United States, mainly in California, Canada, a lot in D.C., Virginia, Maryland, um, Colorado. Many are high profile in the music industry. Families are involved, wives are involved, and these covert projects, as, a, as anybody who's followed my work understands where I come from with this, um, there's insidious torture, assault, harassment, many other things that are le lethal, lethal transmissions, lethal remote assaults, and are literally designed to assassinate a target. So um, the karma of which they can never clear, really. And it's my intention to expose, prove, and prosecute to the max these parties. And as Hollywood sits and glorifies their crime syndicate over there with corporate cabals who have, an who have intentionally deceived the mass collectives for decades, let them finally be not only called out, yet prosecuted once and for all. I really think this is time. Uh, everything is coming into fruition. Everything is being being revealed to us. It's, it's time to pull these people down and prosecute them to the max. Uh, the new year will shine forth and down against those who have been involved in these insidious crimes. And that's, that's the way I'm seeing it. So I just want to throw that out there. Yeah, that's it. That was my little mini rant, but I have an incredibly wonderful guest. This, um, who's joining us tonight, who's, who's been on my guest, uh, been a guest before, and I love him dearly. As my guest tonight is Dan Willis. And let me get you his wonderful bio here in a world where the world has become trapped in a lie where we are led to believe that we need oil and gasoline for our transportation, dangerously polluting nuclear and coal power plants for our electricity, and that the only way to overcome gravity is through the use of rocket fuel. There exists hidden technologies which remain hidden only through the use of perception management of the masses. These lies are able to be perpetuated at a cost to all humanity and our planet. It appears that only through a global conscious awakening of controlled indoctrination that the human race has been subjected to can we expose these hidden advanced technologies for the benefit of all humanity. There are indications in our past, ancient past, during the times of Atlantis and beyond that a vastly superior technology existed that understood the geometrical structure of matter in time and space and its interface with, the, with that of consciousness. Dan Willis worked with IBM's head scientist, Dr. Marcel Vogel, in the 90s, excuse me, in the 80s, to explore the geometrical interface of consciousness and matter in a laboratory, in which the research gave indicators of this science that could lay the foundation for science of the future. Dan is also one of the top secret military witnesses that testified in front of major media at the National Press Club in May of 2001 in support of the release of hidden advanced extraterrestrial derived technologies within the secret government unacknowledged black projects. Since the controlled mainstream media sanitized the information so as, not, as to not alert the public and the Bush administration denied the requested congressional hearing, which was backed by over 450 military and intelligence witnesses, an effort was initiated to meet with scientists around the world to bring out suppressed technologies. Dan spent over 10 years in this effort and experienced directly the purposeful suppression of these advanced technologies firsthand. His website is thewebmatrix.net backslash disclosure. 
And I'm pleased to welcome Dan to the show this evening. Good evening, Dan. So, Laris, uh, always wonderful to be on your show. Wow, that I like that uh, introduction. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> well, thank you. And I must say, I'm, I'm always impressed with your your um, your biography too. I like people to know where you're where you're coming from. And I know you've been a regular at the station and on the shows and on my show and many other shows. And it's always a like I said, it's a it's a real treat and an honor to interview you always. But we have so many things to discuss now. Now, when I look back and see where you've been in in the initial disclosure of so many things when it comes to UFOs, you want to give everybody kind of a I know we touched on this on the uh, before we went live a little bit about where you're coming from and and to take us up from where you've been with the testimony and, and up until now and some of the things that are happening here on the timeline currently. Okay. You know, you know some of the listeners, you know, who are uh, obviously researching and paying attention, you know, this, some of this might be old stuff, might hit some new points. And, uh, but, you know, the other people, uh, you know, even when I went to Washington to testify under oath, uh, like the rest of us uh, in front of the 22 cameras, in the national press club back in 2001, um, uh, you know, I was completely naive of, of the control structure and the history of what's been hidden and why uh, why the first hour was jammed by the NSA and why, you know, Dr. Greer's life was threatened not to go the, before the press club, why uh, when CBS interviewed me, they, they, I, I told them, you know, I'm not doing this unless I can say we have these scientists who can prove we have a solution to get off of nuclear oil and coal. Just a really quick little 10-second statement, but the higher executives made the producer of the show cut that out. And, you know, I just, you know, for uh, the mainstream media to omit something that would be world-changing, you know, in all the major medias. You know, I used to be an ABC newsman. So, you know, I was looking at this, and it... Uh, it made me. Uh, it made me really wonder what what's going on behind the scenes. You know, that was probably back in 2001, and it was around 2014 that some media company out of Hollywood wanted me to write an article on media control, being an ex, you know, newsman and everything. So I thought, oh my God, yeah, this is good. I, I need to research this. I need to find out what's going on. You know, and as you research back through time, essentially you find out that. Uh, you know, there is a secret government going on that the Nazis infiltrated, took over. They've been controlling our perceptions for many, many generations. They've been keeping us technologically retarded while they had advanced anti-gravity and uh, free energy that was developed uh, many, many decades ago. Uh, they've been wanting to keep a lid on this whole thing. Uh, Fortunately, they can do that uh, for them, that you know, by controlling of all the mainstream media. So, you know, it wasn't until the internet came out for shows like yours, uh, Solaris, that uh, and and many others across the web that starting to reveal little bits and pieces, you know, such as the recent release of some of the JFK files that, you know, that. Uh, George H.W. Bush uh, put a secrecy order on for 25 years that now they're just finally being released, which shows that, you know, the Warren Commission actually lied, that there was bullets coming in from multiple directions, and that uh, even, uh, and that uh, Lee Harvey Oswald was uh, actually trained by the CIA, which they, they denied, and that uh, actually uh, Adolf Hitler uh, fully escaped along with Heinrich Himmler, mm -hmm. uh, and you know all the all this was released in the some of some of they they withheld some of them for the you know sake of national security, but you know some of them the ones that they released are very revealing <laughs> of what's been going on. You know when you understand that uh, you know the the FBI was fully aware. If you go to the FBI website, there's like hundreds of documents showing that J. Edgar Hoover was aware of, you know, Hitler's presence there in Argentina. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you, you have, in order to see what's going on with this manipulation, uh, you have to, you have to actually go back through history. You have to look at what sequence of event led to the next sequence of events um 
Oh, well, you know, if you want, let's do a little uh, run back through history going back to 1933. Mm -hmm. um, back then, uh, the Nazis had uh, developed anti-gravity using torsion physics. They realized that, you know, they didn't need rocket propulsion to overcome Earth's gravity. Um, they moved their operations down to Antarctica for numerous reasons. Uh, they uh, actually joined forces with a uh, reptilian race down there. And uh, around 1945, uh, when we supposedly won the war, <laughs> uh, you know, many of them escaped. Uh, they came in through the OSS, which turned into the CIA, thousands of them, uh, Nazi spies coming into that, and then, you know, later Project Paperclip into NASA. Uh, you know, they in infiltrated, and, uh, you know, Hitler and Himmler fully escaped, and then they started uh, with Hitler's uh, underground plant uh, designer that made this huge underground facilities all over Nazi Germany where they had, you know, uh, hundreds of thousands, uh, if not millions, of slaves working on these underground plant for the, uh, you know, for the Nazi uh, war effort. Uh, right after the war, uh, Xavier Dorsch, uh, he was the one, the mastermind. He also designed the uh, the Autobahn. He uh, started working on the uh, quote U.S. underground plant program in a uh, Project Paperclip document that started in New Mexico, started building these underground plants, of which there's, according to Phil Snyder, uh, there's like over 130 of them. I'm sure there's, in the United States alone, they have these huge, massive underground facilities. So you wonder what's going on under there. And, you know, the Nazis realized that they couldn't, match the industrial might of the United States. Uh, we could build, you know, 10 for every one that they could build. And so what they were going to do is um, do this plan called Delkin Shalins Cree, which means worldview warfare. In other words, they were planning to infiltrate into the United States through, through the Nazi sympathizers and the banking elite that was working with them and basically create... Uh, the psychological warfare, uh, Velkin Shalins Krieg means worldview warfare, and they, and they effectively rewrote the history of World War II uh, through the Rockefeller Foundation, uh, so all our school children don't know, you know, they did what's called a limited hangout. They, they include a lot of things that are true in history, but the critical points, you know, they left out. Uh, that was in 1946, 1950. Uh, you know, they started Operation Mockingbird, where, you know, even today, it's even much more sophisticated. They had like 400 journalists that the CIA was controlling. Uh, today, we have what's called non-official cover journalists, where the CIA is giving them information. So, you know, just like the uh, news reporter who was shocked that the... Uh, that we have a solution with a scientist willing to come forth in an open congressional hearing that that was blocked and cut out. Uh, that's, you know, the CIA and NSA working as uh, Daniel Sheehan, our legal counsel, one of the 20 witnesses that went to the National Press Club with me. Uh, he revealed a document showing 42 CIA NSA operatives whose main job is to what are they going to allow and what are they going to block? Mm -hmm. uh, and we can't forget the pharmaceutical industry, as some witnesses, uh, such as William Tompkins, as they infiltrated into Scripps originally, and then they started expanding out to the highest executive levels of most of the large pharmaceutical corporations. And you look back through the pharmaceutical corporations' connections with Nazi Germany and IV Farben and Bayer and Boss, and you know, during the Nuremberg trials, they were. Uh, they basically split up, you know, so that they uh, mm -hmm. could operate differently. Um, and then we had something interesting happen, uh, kind of a split between uh, the Air Force and the Navy. Uh, this was due to what happened in 1942. Some uh, drone ET craft were shot down, two of them. One went to the Navy, one went to the uh, Army Air Force at that time. And uh, 
the uh, Project RAN was in charge of that and in charge of psychological operations as well. So what happened was one went to uh, China Lake in the Navy weapons facility and the other one went to Wright-Patterson Air Force for the, uh, for the Air Force. And so they started to reverse engineering and studying this stuff, you know, just like the Roswell and everything else went over there. Um, by around 1954, and, you know, all, the ter- during, all during this time in the 50s, uh, you know, we had, you know, the, the flying saucer craze, you know, or the, the Space Brothers, you know, you have George Adamski and everything. But as you look at the uh, pictures of the uh, Venetian spaceship, it looks identical to the Nazi Hanabu II. Mm-hmm. Uh, m- many of the... Uh, Many of the encounters, the uh, the beings were speaking in a high German uh, accent. Mm-hmm. Uh, you have, um, you know, the Benny and Barney Hill, where Barney says an evil-eyed Nazi on board. You've got uh, uh, you've got Alan Dulles, infamous Alan Dulles, running around to all the scientists trying to disprove uh, Damsky, telling him to back off. And so it was like a uh, psychological test of the American psyche to see how easily they could be fooled. Mm -hmm. Um, And so um, around 1954, uh, a lot of of stuff happened around 1954, 1955. Uh, An ex-Nazi SS officer, Prince Bernhard in the Netherlands, starts in uh, the Bilderberg Hotel, the meetings which happen every single year since that date. Uh, of the global elite that make plans of how to shape the world, the globalists, as some people call them. Um, And by October of 1954, the U.S., after several decades behind the Nazis that discovered the torsion physics, had finally uh, developed anti-gravity. So we were like a couple of decades behind the Nazis. Uh, And so there was like a... um, Right back in 1952, there was a flyover over Washington, D.C., which basically the Nazis were coming in and intimidating Truman. Mm -hmm. So by the year 1955, oh, and 1954 is also when Eisenhower has his first contact meeting with a uh, more of a benevolent race of Nordic extraterrestrials that offer spiritual advancement and but we have to release our nukes but the corporations that uh, came in that uh, one of our uh, witnesses out of the uh, you know 450 and now it's way over 500 witnesses uh, general stephen lovkin who was on eisenhower stuff said he knew that he was lost losing control eisenhower and that uh, it was not going to be in the best of hands and that uh he, he totally lost control of the corporations. And so, you know, in uh, his, his speech back in 1961, where he, only an alert, knowledgeable citizenry, that's you listeners out there on uh, Revolution Radio, uh, can protect our future liberties and freedoms. And this was because Eisenhower completely lost control. The original MJ-12 group that was set up uh, starting with Admiral Hillencotter, who we warned about the dangerous the dangers of the secrecy associated with the UFO issue, knew it could be uh, abused. Uh, a whole new MJ-12 group was created with Alan Dulles, of all people, the infamous uh, Alan Dulles, who was, helped in all the Nazi infiltration to bring uh, General Reinhard Gellin and his whole Nazi intelligence group into the uh, CIA and was lying to Truman about the estimates of the Soviets. So they had to bring in all this money and keep the CIA going. Uh, and so what happened was, uh, around 1955, uh, I think they got threatened enough that basically the Eisenhower administration that they, they an agreement was made with the uh, Nazi cabal that was working with the Dracos and so and this went with the Air Force now what's interesting is the split that happened between the Air Force and the Navy happened you know back around 1948-49 about when they murdered uh, 
you know, uh, James Forrestal threw him out the window uh, because he wanted to have release. And, you know, Kennedy was on his staff and actually went over there to Germany and witnessed the, uh, the extraterrestrial technologies and things that were over there. Uh, what happened was the Air Force was able to bring in a huge amount of money and kind of pushed the Navy out. And so the Navy went in and did its own secret program and kept on working while the Air Force uh, continued on. And Project RAND then turned into the RAND Corporation. This mm -hmm. was around 1948, 1949. So uh, by uh, 1958, uh, Eisenhower, where he lost control, uh, MJ-12 group, which was run by Alan Dulles, uh, and this was all done for plausible deniability for Eisenhower with uh, Nelson Rockefeller, who restructured the MJ-12 CIA operation. So our legal government no longer had jurisdiction, and so Eisenhower was pissed because he wanted to see what was going on. What happened was they moved it out of the public eye, so to speak, you know, at least our military public eye, over at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base. And they moved everything over to uh, Area 51 and S-4, where they do all the uh, extraterrestrial reverse engineering. And what they, uh, what they did was they denied him access. And so he said he was going to take the 1st Army out of Colorado and go in and take over the base. And so they allowed him you know, to see what was going on, got a report. And there was a witness that uh, gave a deathbed testimony on that. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, time goes along. Uh, around 1963, uh, you know, Kennedy, aware of what's going on, you know, Eisenhower shared his concerns about uh, this uh, group that has infiltrated in. And he wanted to... Uh, you know, get us out of the Vietnam War and get us out of the Federal Reserve. And, and so Alan Dulles set up an assassination directive and working along with, uh, uh, you know, according to the JFK files, it's also revealed that the KGB was well aware that uh, Lyndon B. Johnson, the vice president, was working to set up this whole assassination on Kennedy uh, and there's indications that George H.W. Bush was involved as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and so in 1963, they murdered Kennedy. Uh, and, you know, JFK files are kind of revealing on that. And then, you know, moving up to 1969, they had Stanley Kubik uh, make some studio footage because when they went to the moon, and they did go to the moon, because you have all the ham radio operators pointing with their antennas up at the moon and the highly directional antennas, they can't, and they picked up the, the video feed, I mean the uh, audio feed that was uh, being uh, clipped off before the people could listen to it. Mm -hmm. uh, and so what happened was the uh, lunar module was surrounded by these huge, enormous Draco Federation, and it sounds like something out of Star Trek or something, uh, Draco Federation starships, and they're basically warned off the moon. Uh, they couldn't show that to live people, so they had to have a drop-in video in order to show this. William Tompkins was there at Redondo Beach at the TRW facility and uh, you know made a sketch of exactly what he saw on the live video feed, which they were privilege to be able to see. So that was 1969. Um, what happened, the Disclosure Project basically started in 93, I guess you would say, the uh, Lawrence Rockefeller, and like the rest of the Rockefellers, they, uh, he wanted to have disclosure on this. And so he had Clinton uh, look into it, who had his CIA director look into it, James Woolsey. And, you know, every uh, president's and CIA directors ever since they murdered Kennedy uh, have been denied access. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so he brought in Dr. Stephen Greer, uh, you know, it's because he was a civilian ele element that he couldn't get it through his normal channels. 
And he says he knows the subject's real, trying to figure out why he can't gain access to it. And so they started a witness archival project with uh, some military advisors that advise, you know, if you're going to go before the public, you just don't want like, a, you know, a dozen witnesses. You want hundreds of witnesses. <laughs> so from 93 to, uh, to the year 2000, they collected uh, 450 witnesses, you know, which include uh, generals, admirals, astronauts, uh, military and intelligence witnesses, and some contractors for the government. Um, what, uh, what happened in uh, 97, though, is quite interesting. Uh, at the Pentagon, uh, astronaut Edgar Mitchell was meeting with uh, Dr. Greer for a meeting with uh, the head of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, Admiral Tom Wilson, who was shown some of these unacknowledged special access programs. And unacknowledged special access programs means it doesn't matter who you are. You can be the president or, or anybody. If you're not read into that program, you're denied. And so it gives them the perfect vehicle in order to hide all these operations. And mm -hmm. so he was able to substantiate some of these uh, unacknowledged access programs. And when he did, he found out he was denied access. Here, J-2 position of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, head of intelligence, is being denied access. He said to Dr. Greer and Edgar Mitchell, quote, if you can get your people together and go before the media, you have my permission. This group is illegal, unquote. So... Mm -hmm. In uh, 2000. Can I ask you real quick before, and uh, this is sure. very, very important information. I just want to ask you who allows the clearance? Who allows access to the data? Who, who signs off on that? Who, uh, one more time. Who allows access to the information? If these people are denied access, who is the one responsible for allowing the access? Oh, that's a good question. Mm -hmm. Well, it certainly isn't uh, anybody in our in our regular level of military or, or government levels that have uh, extremely high level access, obviously it's somebody uh, with access that, uh, you know, isn't in our system. Okay, so, so even the president wouldn't be able to do that. Well, they've created a whole different, they've created a whole different infrastructure inside of our government, like a right. government within a government that doesn't account to anybody. Uh, they have their own fundraising mechanisms, you know, a lot of it's, you know, drug money and things. Uh, they have, they have their That's own the shadow uh, government. Yeah, basically your, your shadow government. And so, um, in Just looking for the head man. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah, you know, so, you know, 2001, you know, I was just one witness uh, that uh, my testimony was pretty lightweight, I guess, compared to some of the other boys, you know, uh, talking about 57 different species that they already categorized by 1989. That was Clifford Stone. We were involved in face-to-face -face ET contact with, uh, you know, retrievals. You've got uh, Donna Hare, where NASA's airbrushing the UFOs out before releasing to the public. She worked with NASA for like 20 years, and the astronauts were told to keep quiet what happened on the moon back in 1969. Uh, you've got, uh, uh, let's see, Dr. Carl Wolf, who was uh, brought in for some video equipment where they were, before we went to the moon, they were doing a mosaic of the moon with lunar orbiter. And he saw clearly, very clear pictures of bases on the other side of the moon with uh, uh, domes and mushroom-shaped buildings and towers. And I remember him saying, and here it is, 30 years ago today, and we hope to hear it on the evening news tonight. <laughs> uh, it didn't happen. Uh, and then you have, you know, nukes being shut down with Captain Robert Salas. Uh, and, and a lot of these people, uh, such as, you know, John Callaghan, head of uh, FAA investigations, they had a UFO, you know, five times the size of the 747. He had... they. CIA sworn everybody to secrecy, confiscated everything, but he had backups. He brought all that. Uh, 
Commander Graham Bethune, who was sitting next to me and I had lunch with. He uh, was flying and uh, had full documentation of the UFOs that came up, you know. So my, my testimony was, you know, U.S. Navy ships and secret classified reports were reporting uh, a reddish-orange glowing 70-foot diameter disc emerging out of the ocean, shooting thousands of miles per hour, shooting straight up into space, you know, going to the Chief of Naval Operations, secret classified reports. Um you know, just on and on and on. You know, you had 20 witnesses. So all of them had very, very, each one of them, you know, beside the fact, you know, we're talking about, you know, CIA directors and presidents being denied access. The fact that we're talking about, uh, oh, and uh, uh, Mark McCandish, you know, talking about the alien reproduction vehicles that we had back in the 50s. That they had an exhibit in Norton Air Force Base back in 1988. Uh, you know, these things go faster than light, uh, they're, you know, based on, uh, <laughs> based on reverse engineering these things, you know, so you have all this incredible information. You have 22 cameras in the back row. The place is packed. You know, the largest event of the National Press Club history. Well, what happened is, uh, you know, CNN and the rest of the uh, mainstream media outlets, Oh, they said, oh, are we not alone? Some people think they have proof there is. They want to have a congressional hearing based on the reality of UFOs, you know. And, uh, and so they made it sound like these hundreds of witnesses and all this information want to have a congressional hearing based on the reality of UFOs. See how cleverly they do what the CIA terms as a limited hangout, which means that, you know, yeah, they could say they covered the event. But they effectively sanitize it to such a degree that the uh, the news watcher on the other end doesn't really have a – not unless they happen to catch it on the internet. But, you know, you have a huge mainstream audience out there that although the numbers have been dropping and dropping as they get caught more and more of their deceptive uh, news, uh, you know – you know, watching CNN, ABC, CBS, and all these, a lot of people find it hard to believe that uh, all this beautifully polished information and that trustworthy news announcer that's reading the teleprompter has no idea, and well, some of them do, some of them go to the CIA school, that uh, all this is being, the script is all being prepared through billions of dollars of think tanks through the CIA, which connected to the Tavistock Institute and all this, in order to engineer our consent and form our perceptions on the, uh, on the mainstream media news. Right. So, um, yeah. So, you know, it, yeah. And, and so it's kind of interesting, you know, just recently, uh, you know, this year, you know, Tom DeLong came out, you know, and brought along a couple of these guys. One of them was uh, Eli Elizondo, I think that's how you pronounce it. He was uh, working on with the Pentagon on this uh, uh, advanced aerial threat uh, program that to identify UFOs, which they put $22 million into. And, mm -hmm. you know, what's kind of interesting in the uh, DeLong kind of disclosure on this, uh, so to speak, uh, to the Stars Academy was one guy working with, uh, you know, Lockheed Skunk Works, you know, talking about, oh, we're thinking about getting this technology together. You know, and they're all trying to, you know, get funding, you know, to do all this mm -hmm. stuff. We're trying to get funding together to... Um, you know, develop some of these technologies. But, you know, Ben Rich, the head of Lockheed Skunk Works back in 1993, said very clearly, uh, we already have the technology to go, you know, amongst the stars. We can take the ET home. They figured mm -hmm. out an error in the equations. And, but it would take an act of God to ever get these, these technologies out to benefit humanity. So mm -hmm. back in 93, they were way, way advanced. So it... it kind of um, it, it there is this kind of a split between uh, the philosophies between what's going on with the cabal that is kind of connected with you know the CIA NSA Air Force you know the whole group although you know there's white hats and black hats and everything right mm -hmm. it's, not all, hats. It's, not, it's not all black and white you know uh, 
but uh, but they're well, wanting a limited disclosure, whereas the Navy, which uh, as Admiral Tom Wilson of the Navy uh, said, you know, get this out, get the information out, just like William Tompkins, who had Admiral Hugh Webster say about his book that he released, you know, it says, don't leave anything out. He's afraid he's going to release all this classified information. He says, it's most important to the future of our company. Tell it all. And so you've got the Department of Navy, which includes the Marine Corps, um, to wants the full disclosure. Because they know there's these illegal operations, these human trafficking. You've got uh, satanic pedophile groups. You've got all the stuff that needs to be exposed Right. But the other group doesn't want to expose all of it. They want to have a little bit of it exposed so they still look okay. And mm -hmm. so they don't have to have, like, uh, war crimes like they did well, in Well, uh, there you go. Nuremberg, you know. Exactly. And I'll tell you right now, and that's exactly what we need is um, a new organization to create some kind of a, a prosecution where we can get these guys rounded up and prosecute them to the max for war crimes. You know, it goes from one thing, you know, you talk about the sex trafficking, that's a big deal, but I also understand from where I come from with artificial intelligence and the, and the type of synthetic telepathy, mind control, brain hacking they do, they can actually induct children in with that program, not only adults with covert harassment and psychotronics, but children. So this is a big tentacle of the beast we need to go after. And I think that, um, you know, if we can just get these SOBs and get them all and get them quick, I think that this world would change for the better overnight not to just you know absolutely absolutely there's some indications but you know it's hard to say you know with with all this all you can do is you know keep your antenna up you know look mm -hmm. at all the leaked documents coming out look at the hundreds right. of witnesses what they're saying and kind of put it together not to say that you'll have all the answers by any means but at least you'll have somewhat of a picture of what's been hidden from us and some of the operations that are going on i mean you look at uh look at the wikileaks stuff you know with the podesta emails i mean it's very clear you know that you know the clintons have complete control of the uh of the media and you know the, some of the connections with the Pizzagate thing, with Podesta's, you know, and all the stuff, you know, in the islands, you know, with with the Clintons going to the that uh, that one guy's island and everything. There's a lot of little, a lot of little leaks that are going around that uh, kind of hint at it. But I think what's mm -hmm. going on right now is, uh, you know, a lot of people don't like Trump uh, because he looks like he's you know, the uh, the lapdog for all the corporations, right? And uh, just do everything for the corporations and, you know, forget about the planet and humanity. It's all about making money. And I think there's another operation going on. I think he's he's got something going on. And some of the hint on that is that uh, what happened when Eisenhower lost control he didn't fully lost control. Now we're having some of the witnesses. I, I spoke for hours with uh, one of the new secret space program whistleblowers, Michael Jerloff, and he was involved with the uh, Marine Intelligence Unit that Eisenhower mm -hmm. set up, and because he knew that this cabal, you know, he you can tell by his farewell speech, you know, he was really concerned uh, that this cabal was going to basically take over and. Mm -hmm. uh, and completely, uh, completely do a coup and and take over our legal constitutional government. You know, so we mm -hmm. wouldn't have anything. And so we set up the special marine division. And what happened uh, in November this year? Uh, I don't know if you happened to catch it, but it didn't really get too much mainstream coverage. Mm -hmm. But for 30 minutes, the Marines flew over the CIA headquarters basically as a show of force to tell them to back off what they were doing because the CIA was still carrying on the Obama regime's uh, orders, yep. which was supplying all these weapons and things to the Syrian freedom fighters, which was going right into the hands of ISIS and Al-Qaeda that were being used to kill our guys. Mm -hmm. And so um, the Marines basically uh, flew their... 
these uh, tilt prop uh, type of uh, aircraft for 30 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> over mm -hmm. the uh, 30 minutes. That's a long time, you know. So they actually the whole... really did that. That wasn't just a story. Uh, several witnesses have verified that. Okay. I just want to double check. That's very interesting. Very, very interesting. Yeah. Well, you know, the CIA is up to no good, as we all know. I'm sure there might be a few little tidbits of people there that are halfway decent. But, you know, and also when you look at the CIA, they're also overseeing Area 51, S4, and all those areas out there. So you've got these guys in control. And you know as well as I do that they're responsible for not only doing um, you know, the Obama regime orders and supplying weapons, but what kind of weapons are we talking about? And also the type of brain hacking and remote psychotronic weapons and the mind control weapons. CIA is, is notorious for inducting people into mind control programs. That's where you're dealing. You go after the CIA. CIA, I'm telling you right now, we have to go after these alphabet agencies. And then we have to make them accountable for what they've been doing. So, you know, just, just from my own personal experience, I can tell you, Dan, these guys are bad news. What they do to people is absolutely, completely destructive with artificial oh. intelligence. So oh, anybody that researches, you know, it, you know, started with Alan Dulles, you know, with, uh, with the MK, who started the MK Ultra program, you know, where they were doing uh, horrific things to people to, to, you know, fractionally break up their personalities into their brains so they can use them for Manchurian candidates. He was, uh, Alan Dulles was responsible for bringing the LSD in. Uh, you know, and, you know, with huge unlimited amounts of funding and r huge interest in mind control, uh, it, they have gotten so sophisticated now, as, as you're, you're very aware. Yeah. You know, it's the all transmission of signal. That's all it is. All they use is a frequency. It's a, it's a remote brain hack. It's, it's connected into EEG cloning and heterodyning. And when you talk about the personality where they make a split, they can actually create a split on a healthy target brainwave activity by overlaying it with an EEG cloning program. And that clone can actually be a personality to be inserted into the target. I understand, Dan, I could work for these guys. I know the technology so freaking well. This is what I mean by this stuff is serious. And this artificial intelligence that everybody's glorifying lately, this is part of it. So I didn't mean to interrupt you, sorry, but I, yeah, what they used to do in the old days with the torturing and, and, and sexually abusing and physically abusing a target until they break down and, and start shattering the, the personality, well, now they can do that remotely from a distance. They can nail you in your home. They can nail you anywhere you are on the map globally where um, everything and some of it is satellite driven, but, but literally it's, it's just a bad, bad scenario. So yeah, you have to ask yourself, who's got, who's, who has access to all this technology? Who's, who's really perpetrating or running the show for all this stuff? Well, what what just got released, uh, you know, just just recently, uh, with across the entire mainstream media. You know, if the New York Times, CNN, BBC, all the long list of all the ones they control are saturating the media with the reality of this Navy fighter that came off of the USS Nimitz about 100 right. miles outside of San Diego, where he shows, you know, the, uh, the, the craft uh, very clear, puts into everybody's mind the ET reality. And it's just kind of interesting, you know, how Hollywood works in conjunction with preparation. Like, say, just bef while we were doing the, uh, the press conference back in 2001, uh, the same time was coming out the movie Pearl Harbor, Mm -hmm. And just a, f just a few months right afterward, we had 9-11. And it's also interesting to note that uh, Star Wars, you know, which is now controlled by Disney Corporation, you know, bought from mm -hmm. uh, Lucas, uh, came out on the 15th. And then on the 16th, the next day, you know, so everybody's thinking about space and Star Wars and, you know, and, um, you know, they're all they're all hyped up about you know outer space right, and then the next day the 16th is when they hit it, hit the mainstream media blitz of this you know they don't put that out just they don't release this information unless there's a purpose behind it mm -hmm. um, and yeah. the the purpose can go one of a couple of ways it could be that. You know, on the positive, let's go on the positive side first. On the positive side, um, this could be the beginning of... Now, there's a lot of indications that the White Hats have basically uh, gone in and 
there's like thousands of indictments that are lined up for the cabal members. And the cabal has been kind of gotten soft and kind of uh, <laughs> over the years. And But the... Um, the alliance, I guess you could say, of that's working together has been working around the clock in order to bring these people down, along mm. with their satanic pedophile rings and everything else. So uh, it could be that this could be the start of you know full disclosure. Like it'll it'll have to be spoon fed, you know, one bit after another bit to get into the whole story, or else you know, it, like too much you know, right. for everybody. But, in, but even the, the disclosure itself, even when we talk about disclosure, we understand very clearly the bigger scenery behind it all. So, so for example, you're talking about the USS Nimitz and that whole scenario. So I, Now, I smell a rat with that whole scene. Now, I don't know how you feel about it, but it seems to me like that was an orchestrated distraction and that there's something about it that just doesn't add up. Now, that's just me, just like the whole thing with DeLong. You know, first of all, we're talking about somebody who um, he's working with with the Pentagon, who's an ex-Pentagon employee, apparently, or contracted with Pentagon. How do you just get out of the Pentagon to work for this guy? Where Where's this money and this funding coming from, as, as I probably mentioned to you prior before we went live? But I smell a rat with this whole scenario insofar as distraction, distraction, distraction. And what we're dealing with here, and not that I don't, um, I know we have extraterrestrial intelligence. I understand the reverse technology with the, with the uh, Germans prior to World War II. I get all that. But what I know from my own experience and my own breaking down of the technology and talking to developers of this technology, we have the, the whole idea behind this is, is artificial intelligence interface, global mind control, and creating delusions, delusions globally to a mass scale so people are actually swept away into the false matrix. And some of this stuff that they're doing, even with the fake extraterrestrial scenery, that's not valid ET. And this is what I'm talking about. This is what's concerning me is it's not true. It's not true disclosure. It's an orchestrated disclosure with the false matrix. Does that make sense? Oh, well, yeah. That, that would be the other flip side of the whole thing would be right? that, you know, it's kind of, <clears throat> you know, it kind of smells something too, that, uh, you know, here Elizondo, the man that was in the Pentagon uh, in control of this program that came out because he was feeling like uh, there was too much secrecy about the whole thing, right? And so here he is uh, on CNN and, and all over the place, you know, exposing this. Well, he happens to be one of the group that's working with uh, Tom DeLong. Yeah, you know, this is and bad Tom news. De Go and ahead. Tom, <laughs> Tom DeLong, which is kind of interesting, you know, that Tom DeLong met with uh, Dr. Michael Sala and uh, Dr. Robert Wood, along with mm -hmm. William Tompkins when he was still alive. William Tompkins started to explain to him the Navy secret space program and what was going on. He got up and just walked away. Wow. So, you know, what I get from that is that he is, I don't know if he's conscious of it or he's being played, one of the two. He's given, he's being fed this information and he's, you know, he's writing these books, you know, uh, you know, Chasing Shadows, Secret Machines and all these things. Um, yeah, he's he, basically he, copying and replicating data and some of it's not even accurate. And another thing is, I, he, I consider him to be a poster boy for UFO disclosure now. And that's what I mean by the distraction. You were out there, you were the real deal. The people that were with you were the real deal. You've got this guy all of a sudden taking everybody's, I don't know what it is, but all of a sudden he's out there. And, and I like George Knapp, don't get me wrong. I really have a lot of respect for him, but I have to question George Knapp promoting this guy. And he's doing a lot of it. So, um, oh. you know, from what I've seen, there's, this guy's getting played up. And another thing, like I said before, I understand the Pentagon very clearly, and, and you probably do too with your background, but I'll tell you, these guys, the Pentagon are notorious for brain links, mind control. They, they know the whole deal with covert technology. They get it. So I don't know what they're looking for or what they're sniffing for, but we do have the Black Science Department, so why is this guy getting funded? The only thing I could think of is that he's a decoy for other things and that he's actually going to be extracting or trying to extract data from real, real actual people to acquire his own database of information, which really doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Like I said, I go after the, the real source behind all of this, and I can tell you point blank just from my own, and I said before – we need to go after the artificial intelligence array system. We need to go after what they've been doing with the mind control and the signals intelligence programs that have been enhanced with the covert technology I'm familiar with, with interface with artificial telepathy, which actually induces psychotronic programs. I know it, and um, I think that's going to be the key to all this. With, and, and you're in, too, obviously, with the UFO, but I'll tell you point blank. Forget this stuff. This guy's a sideshow, you know? So that's my two cents for what it's worth. 
w looking at it and looking at all the factors and the people that are connected and the way that, you know, the Department of Defense approved and released this along with the complete mainstream media compliance across all their networks, what, mm -hmm. you know, my, my speculation is that most likely this is a rollout. You're going to see more information following this. They didn't put that out for no reason. There's going to be other information following, and what it's going to be is promoting the limited disclosure in order to hide the cabal's crimes and Correct. move it out in that direction. On the darker side of the whole thing, you know, we've had... Uh, <coughs> we've had... Oh, oh okay. gosh. I guess we'll, we're heading for a quick we'll break. <laughs> <laughs> we will. Hold that thought. We're going to have a break. Everybody listen to Raven Star Switching Hour. I'm Solaris Blue Raven. My wonderful guest tonight is Dan Willis. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. 